I'm with Babette Plom and she's a tennis expert and she's been with the Netherlands tennis for many years and she has shared her expertise on several upper limb issues at this IOC advanced team physician course. Babette, um, thanks for joining the little chat and you talked about the elbow today and you made a point that uh, in younger tennis players there's a condition that's often overlooked. Yes, that's correct. We had an elbow session today with uh, Denise Eigendahl and Anne Kohls and we talked about, uh, among others, about the uh, osteochondritis dissecans and that's, um, that's a very serious injury in adolescent tennis players and sometimes difficult to diagnose so you have to have a high level of suspicion for it because if you catch it early you can actually heal it whereas if you, you, know, if you miss it and you have a one or two year delay then that can be sometimes affect their tennis careers. And so what are the keys to diagnosis once you have the awareness? Once you have the, the, the yeah, once you suspect the injury, um, you have to ex examine, of course, the, the player carefully and you have to do, uh, send him in for further investigation. So you have to do an x-ray and uh, possibly an MRI. Okay. And are there any palpation findings? On of course, yes. Yes, so they usually have pain on the lateral side of the elbow they probably have limited extension, sometimes a limited flexion, and when you do supination and pronation, can be very, very painful, and sometimes you have a little crepitation. The play yourself, the symptoms are more like a dual pain, a dual pain that, that sometimes increases with play, and, and um, those findings are usually more non-specific. Okay. And what's the prime age group we're looking for in boys and in girls? Men and the, the prime age group is actually 11 to 15. Sometimes a little bit younger, sometimes you discover it later, but that's, that's the group. And that's also the group that actually starts, in, when they're good in tennis, they increase their training load. And, um, and that's when they get, because of the repetitive strain, um, you know, and the, the stresses during serving and during forehands, that can cause these problems on the outside where there's a lot of, of stress. And briefly on the imaging, what are the key positive findings? What do you find? Yeah, the key positive findings is that you have uh, radiolucency in the um, uh, humeral capitellum and on the MRI you have bone marrow edema. Once you have the MRI you can't miss it. And you mentioned that this does really affect management. Yes, it does affect management because when they're, when they're younger and the lesion is stable and the growth plate is still open, they can heal completely. Whereas when they're older, it's an unstable lesion and the, the growth place is closed, then, then it can, um, you can get fragmentation and you can get loose bodies and then you need surgery. And then you're, you'll be stuck with, with a little bit of damage of the, of the cartilage and you really want to avoid that if possible. So potentially career ending wouldn't be over the top? Well, career ending not because there are very famous tennis players who actually you know, won high level grand slams that have had this injury. But it, it still affects it, so yeah, you'd rather go without it. And you made another important point about an important diagnostic test. Tell us about that. Yes, and that's the that's actually the um, the valgus instability and the um, the partial tear of the medial or ulnar collateral ligament, and that's sometimes very very difficult to differentiate from uh, medial epicondylitis because the flexor muscles of of the arm are actually stabilizers of the of the elbow. Um, so what you always want to do if you, if you have a player with, that you suspect of this condition or has medial elbow pain, do some valgus testing. So you do some stress testing where you put strain, valgus strain on the elbow and um, if you do that and with the uh, um, ulnar collateral ligament tear you always have pain whereas in um, medial epicondylitis you, d you have no pain. So good it's very good to differentiate the two. Good. And just a quick one to finish, I know you've been active on Twitter as uh, at Doc Plum. How, yes. Who are your main followers, do you think, and what's your sense about social media in tennis oh, and my, medicine? Um, I think my main followers are actually um, physiotherapists and, and um, yeah, and, and sports physicians. And um, I haven't been consistent enough, but, but I'm, what I'm trying to direct them into, well, tennis, um, tennis related research, the BGSM, of course. And, uh, and the Olympics because I volunteered for the Olympics and the Paralympics and uh, that's something to really look forward to. Fantastic Babette. Well look, I know you're a top tennis player in your day and <laughs> you bring a lot of expertise to tennis medicine and players are fortunate to have you taking care of them. You've done a great job with the Netherlands tennis team among other things and uh, it was lovely to hear you at this uh, international advanced team physician course. So thanks for joining the little video.
Thank you, my pleasure. And that was Dr. Babette Plom, who is one of the tennis medicine experts. She was a former editor of the main tennis journal and now is the deputy editor of BJSM, where she's responsible for education. She was part of the ATPC in Oslo and she's looking forward to the fifth advanced team physician course in Stockholm in May 22 to 24, 2013. Thanks for watching this video.